Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, and welcome to a special edition of Hikino, coming to you from Kuoka Public Charter School, about 12 miles outside of beautiful Pahoa Town on Hawaii Island. This episode is part of a series of ongoing shows focusing on Hawaiian values. Each installment focuses on a specific value and will feature stories about people who live their lives based on that value. The value of this episode is imi na awao, which means enlightenment and wisdom. Here at Kuokala, students and teachers work hard to imi na oao by honoring ancient indigenous knowledge alongside today's 21st century skills. Elementary students use computer-based programs as early as the third grade, and all middle and high school students receive their individual laptops to use in their classes. There are a wide variety of classes offered that range from distant lecture learning courses to hands-on marine science courses in our fish ponds. Our first story of Imi Nahawao comes from students at Moana Lua High School on Oahu. It shows how passion can lead to enlightenment. In this case, a teacher's passion for culinary arts leads to his students gaining wisdom about life through cooking. But I'm looking for two exceptional sources. In uh, teaching, I have a master's in education with a focus on uh, secondary English. And I have a culinary arts degree. I have a business degree as well. And uh, yeah, three degrees. With all his degrees in culinary, business, and teaching, combined with his life skills, okay. Lars Mitsuda was the okay, perfect candidate go. for a new job opening Come here at Wanaloa High School. I was offered uh, the position to do culinary and cooking, and uh, once given that opportunity, I couldn't say no. Even though he teaches culinary, his focus is having his students understand that cooking is just a small ingredient in the big pot of life taking what's learned in the kitchen and applying it to their own lives. We can actually get up and do like hands-on stuff other than just taking notes or taking tests. It's more like you actually learn things about the real world and what you, what you would need to do in the future. I don't know how to cook. So I'm about to graduate and need to learn how to cook before I starve in college. Uh, the culinary arts basically covers everything. It's not just cooking, it's a way of uh, managing yourself, time management. It's a way of looking at something and problem solving. What we would like to do is start up a mock cafe where the students are actually making something, having a live audience, and it helps them to uh, manage other people, manage themselves, and just to give them that real life experience of what it's like to one, run a business, and to two, cook in a real kitchen. Hoping to spice up students' lives by introducing the world of cooking to them, Mr. Mitsuda finally knows where he's meant to be. So I think that, especially for Mr. Mitsuda, but I think for all teachers, if you put us in our element, that's when we thrive. So since Mr. Mitsuda is teaching culinary now, I think everybody, the students as well as the staff, is going to see him really grow as a teacher. Uh, I feel joy, I feel excitement. I love teaching, I love being with kids, and especially when you get to teach your passion and you get to teach kids life skills as well. I mean, it's the best combination ever. I'm Rana Sho from Wanaloa High School for Hiki No. Our next story comes from one of Kuo Okala's partners, Kamehameha Schools, along with Ho'o'ulu Lahui, helped to launch our school in order to provide a culturally based educational center to the families of Puna. This story by the students at the Kapa'a Lama campus on Oahu shows how exploring a stormy chapter from the past can enlighten us for the future. I just had a hard time at the job. I just got cut. When faced with adversity, do you run for cover or weather the storm? Inspired by the book Wayfinding Through the Storm, Speaking Truth to Power, a new course at Kamehameha Schools delves into the trusty controversy of the 1990s, focusing on the impact to the school and its students. 
When trustee misconduct jeopardized Bishop Estate's nonprofit status, the controversy erupted into a huge blowout that made national headlines and resulted in the resignations of all five trustees. I'd say that from the time that the old trustees left until now, we've been doing very well in um, trying to control our actions for the good. Part of the healing process for some of the teachers and staff was to share their experiences in the book, which was released in 2009. The Wayfinding Through the Storm book was one of our summer reading books, and so after kind of getting engaged in like the text and just the people and the voices, and then kind of thinking about my schedule for my senior year, you know, I thought being here for 12 years and making this my 13th, I should really know my school better. And reading the book was one step, but taking the class was like, a whole new adventure. The class offers a unique learning experience. Rather than just recounting events, guest speakers who experience the controversy firsthand give insight and context into the tumultuous times. The class serves as a living lesson about the power of standing up for one's beliefs and taking action. We've created this course and it's a course that we think is going to change things. You don't just, you know, stand up, stand out, become a little rebellious for what you believe in, but it has to go somewhere. At the end of the semester, students were compelled to take action and decided to create a petition for student rights to present to the administration. I signed the petition because I wanted the administration to hear our viewpoints and opinions and to take what we had to say into consideration when making important decisions for the school. Like, I think the class really gave me a voice and it really taught me how to stand up for what I believe in. The powerful lesson learned by students in this course has led to an unexpected demand to offer it again this semester. This unique opportunity allows students to learn about their past in order to pave a way for a brighter future for Kamehameha. This is Sheikh Kawe from Kamehameha Schools Kapalama for Hikino. We're back at Kuo Club Public Charter School near Pahoa for a look at the Hawaiian value imi na wow, which means enlightenment and wisdom. In the 2014 through 15 school year, a major storm and the threat of a lava flow had profound effects on the students and their families that will continue to impact them for years to come. While these threats and natural disasters created fear, stress, and financial hardship, they also presented many opportunities for regeneration and regrowth in the coming years. We are excited to continue our journey to imi na wow. Our next story of enlightenment comes from Wheeler Middle School in central Oahu and proves that looking past stereotypes can need you to learn the true essence of a person. DeAndre is a military dependent, like most of his classmates here at Wheeler Middle School. He has been stationed in many unfamiliar places. Each new assignment challenges him to overcome the stereotypes he has held. Hawaii wasn't any different. Most inaccurate stereotypes I've had was that I thought everybody in Hawaii would be like surfers or big Samoans and that everything would be based off of pineapples and turtles. Those arriving in the islands aren't the only ones with stereotypes. Local boys like Nohili had them too. Football's for girls, rugby's for men. Yeah. When I first seen the military kids, I didn't, the way they acted towards other people, it, uh, I didn't really like it. Some, some military kids, yeah, they're, they were okay. These stereotypes can cause immediate dislike. I first met DeAndre in seventh grade. I thought he, he was like any other. He was the same thing, the same military, like any other military kid. This is how he is. We are Taking the time to get to know someone can help change negative stereotypes. I learned from my friend Nohili that Hawaiian people are not always laid back and lazy as people think they are. Most Hawaiian people are cool in their own special way. He taught me how to control myself around military kids. I learned how to be better and not to use physical action. Now we are really good friends. We, we hang out most of the time. Well, yeah, that's our friendship at times. Two friends who on the surface have nothing in common share one important trait. They have both managed to overcome their stereotypes and that has made all the difference. I'm Anna Choi from Wheeler Middle School for Hikino. Our next story of Imi Naowao 
comes from students at Kuana Nakoa Middle School on Oahu. It's a profile of a veteran boxing coach who offers pearls of wisdom to his young protégés. My name is Joel Kim, and one of my jobs is as a boxing coach. Clean up, set up the bags, set up the gear, greet the kids and the adults as they come in. There's an old uh, saying that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I try and give them a good work ethic and their skills will build up and they do well that way. I hope all my students, all my kids, boys and girls grow up to be successful and love their life, love their careers, enjoy them, are successful and again love what they're doing like I do. Hopefully I've taught them, you know, that uh, anything in life you got to work hard for. You want to be honest and do a good work and be dependable. I'd say happiness is something you create for yourself, you know. It's the way you situate your life and, and for everybody it's different. Uh, for me it's being able to do the things I do, uh, love to do, be around the people I love to be with. When I was young, a teenager, uh, I had a uh, old World War II veteran, Marine uh, boxer, who was my coach, and kind of influenced me to join the Marines, to box, uh, do a lot of things I do today. It's a lot of my outlook, perspective, I think, comes from him. But life is a learning process, and if I didn't do the things I did the way I did, I wouldn't learn the lessons I learned. You know, I wouldn't become that much wiser, I would say. Nobody likes to lose. I hate losing matches, but. Every loss is a chance to, you know, reflect and go back and do something a little bit better. Oh, I'm extremely satisfied with the route I followed. If I had any, had to do anything again, uh, I'd be like an old wise man told me before, I would do everything I did, just have a little bit more fun doing it. We're back at Kua Okala Public Charter School near Poha on Hawaii Island for a special look at the Hawaiian value, Imi na Oao which means enlightenment and wisdom. Our school's mission includes the saying, Pilina Aina, Pilina Kanaka, and Pilina Uhane, or positive relationships with the land, its people, and ourselves. Using our values to maintain positive relationships help us to find Kealapono, the right path. The purpose of our journey on this path is to seek education, wisdom, and enlightenment, or imi na oau. Our next story illustrating Imi na Oau is from students at Konawaina High School on the Kona side of our island. They show how a stage adaptation of a classic story can enlighten new generations about the hardships endured in World War II Europe. What time does to memories is a funny thing. But some memories should never be forgotten. Located in Kainaliu on the west coast of Hawaii, the Aloha Performing Arts Company presented a new adaptation of the play, The Diary of Anne Frank. Students from Kona were treated to a performance of the play, learning how a young Jewish girl of 13 hid from the Nazis for two years during World War II. On the set, actress Mia Krebel Bruno shares with us her thoughts of how the show has transformed her. It shows me that there's a lot to be grateful for. And even even her being in the annex and still being so bubbly and animated and happy, even with all the pressure that's coming in from on, uh, outside, it, it gives me a different perspective of the world. It's, it's, it changes, it changes you. Seeing just all the, the horrible things that people are capable of and then still being able to to smile and be happy. In between two back-to-back -back performances, the producers Dr. Barry and Gloria Blum and director Jerry Tracy graciously share with us their passion for the project and the message they hope to communicate to the next generation. This uh, is actually, bits of this still go on in the world all over. You know, we have fear of foreigners, we have fear of immigrants, we have uh, discrimination against people of different religions or different sexual preferences. Bullying in the classroom. Yeah. This is all part of the same problem. When it's ignored, it can fester, it can grow. 
and it's our job to educate ourselves and to make sure that this cannot be allowed to happen again. Yeah, one of the teachers whispered to me before the show started that I don't think most of these kids know what the Holocaust is, which is part of why we're here. Uh, to, to help educate, as you say, a, a little bit in our community about what the Holocaust was, what uh, the Anne Frank story, uh, how it fits into it. And uh, as Barry and, Gloria, Barry and Gloria say, never again. Konawana senior Alec Lugo plays Peter, the young man who is also hiding in the annex. The Diary of Anne Frank is here to remind the next generation that history can rewrite itself, so we have to do our best job to keep it from doing that, to keep hatred and discrimination out of our lives, because otherwise, you know, horrible things will happen again, and the next generation needs to understand what has happened and how to prevent it. Reporting for Konawana High School, this is Alex Miyashiro for Yikino. Welcome back to Kuokula Public Charter School on the Big Island and our special look at our Hawaiian value known as Imi Na'owau, which means enlightenment and wisdom. Our next story of Imi Na'owau comes from students at Waianae in West Oahu. They show how accepting a person for who they are can lead to enlightenment and understanding. In sixth grade, I started to wear makeup and I looked at other people and see how I'm different from them and knew that someday I would be this way. Raquel Largo is an eighth grade student at Waianae Intermediate School. From the time she was in fifth grade, she knew something didn't feel right inside of her body. When I was little, actually, some kids would call me like or ask me if I'm a boy or a girl because the way my hair was or the way I would do things. When I was a boy, I didn't do much with my look or anything. Raquel was born a male named Royce and is a transgender person. A transgender person is someone who identifies with the gender that is opposite from the gender they are born into. So a person who was born a male but later identifies as a woman is transgender and vice versa. There is a difference between being identified as transgender as compared to being identified as being transsexual. Transsexual would be someone who takes hormones or does something surgically to identify to that uh, sex that they uh, identify with. Transgender would have not done anything to their body to identify as that gender, as that male or female gender. In the seventh grade, Raquel finally decided to transition into being transgender, identifying as a female. She was only 13 years old at the time. Well, it was very rare for someone to uh, identify as one at an early age, but um, it is, it does happen. Being a student in middle school is tough enough, but being a transgender student presents its own set of challenges. I've been bullied a lot, called a lot of names that weren't so nice and I just didn't think any of it because I knew becoming this I would get bullied. According to the 2011 National School Climate Survey report, nearly 64 percent of transgender students in middle school and high school in the United States are verbally harassed in school. People are ignorant to the fact that we're all human beings and we're all equal. She's still the same person, she still has the same personality, and she's still my friend. As an eighth grader, Raquel has been challenging the people around her to view the world differently. While an intermediate school administration is examining arrangements needed for transgender students. The transgender student is treated just as any other student is on campus. The consideration that we need to put in place are the logistics, such as having a gender neutral bathroom. It will feel awkward to go in a boys' bathroom like this because I know that a lot of boys don't appreciate or accept the way I am. All the support she has received has made a world of difference in her successful transition. I support her every, in every way, whichever way she, she um, wants to go, socially, mentally, physically, in every aspect of her life. I know that I can come out and be who I wanted to be 
knowing that there are people who love me and support me. Living as a female, she finally feels accepted and can be her true self. I want to be judged positively because no matter what I look like, pretty, ugly, boy, girl, because we're all human beings and we should all be treated equally. This is Lehali Opunui reporting from Waianae Intermediate School for Hikino. Our next story from Roosevelt High School on Oahu proves that wisdom is not always a function of age and experience. Even the young can be wise if they just take the time to smell the coffee. On a typical busy day at downtown, people enjoy looking for a place that offers refreshment and stimulation. Like one of them, I was looking for a place to rest. One day, a sign of a surfer surfing on a coffee cup caught my attention. The discovery of the Beachbum Cafe opened the door to meet new people over a cup of Hawaiian coffee. Dennis McCoy opened his coffee shop in January 2011 and has shown a strong passion for his locally grown coffee. I wanted to have my own business and I was trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do. I had several different ideas for uh, businesses including you know, business services but I really wanted to do something that was social in nature. So it just so happened that, you know, coffee was the uh, position I decided I wanted to go with and, for the, uh, the, the uh, business model. The unique flavors of Hawaii-grown coffee get a boost by Dennis's unique drip process. Each custom brewed cup does take at least three minutes longer than the mainstream coffee chain shops. At the Beach Bum Cafe, however, customers see the weight as a rare and valuable opportunity to get to know strangers, sharing the love for a good coffee. I will typically ask someone if, you know, if it's the first time here, how they found out about us, and that inspires a little bit of conversation. Often they'll see something on an internet site like Yelp. Then I'll ask them where they're from, places that, you know, maybe some place I'm familiar with, and what brings them to Hawaii, you know, so it just it becomes a very conversational thing, and especially because I'm standing in front of them for three minutes or so brewing their coffee, so it gives us an opportunity to exchange some uh, information about ourselves. As a regular, I am fascinated with customers who bring a variety of backgrounds and being able to hear about their origins, professions, as well as experiences they encounter. The people who come here are really nice and there's always somebody interesting and we all talk together. No, actually, I mean, it's nice to have folks who actually know, uh, know about the different kinds of coffees and are interested in it. I mean, to, to find people who actually like what they're doing um, is actually a pretty nice aspect of things. Um, it, they're, it's just very pleasant. To, uh, it's a much more personal touch that they give here. It's something you don't get in any, any other coffee shop. Uh, just uh, they treat their, they treat their uh, customers like family. As a high school student who aspires to be a journalist, I believe face-to-face -face interaction in this age of online social networking and smartphones is very important. Beachworm Cafe is my internet full of information, stories, and interaction from people all over the world. And the best part is that it does not require Wi-Fi. This is Satoshi Sugiyama for Hiki no. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Hiki no on the Hawaiian value known as Imi na o wao, which means enlightenment and wisdom. All of the stories we presented were conceived, shot, written, and edited by students like us. Be sure to tune in next week when Hikino students explore the Hawaiian value known as Ike Pono, which means to know what is right.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.